Uh, so basically, the first time we met, it was sort of initial sort of like meeting in the mind. Meet and greet. Meet and greet. <laughs> then, and, and, and in which I asked you some important questions, and one of them was uh, w ways in which you might be represented. I, s I sort of asked you what your hobbies were or what your interests well were. Well, that you would have drawn a bit of well a blank. <laughs> well, you should have said work. So I thought, okay, work. So I pictured you immediately from that moment on in a work context. And previously I thought maybe take you out of the robes and but that, that wasn't going to work after having met you and, 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 and you had very strong sort of views on that. The way I recall it, we had three hours to do the drawing and it was, uh, I was I impressed how still you were and you were telling me that that was... Uh, uh, that's what judges that's are what supposed judges to do. <laughs> exactly. Um, but also, I, I actually remember it to be a very important day for you. I found out later and was very, um, I felt very honoured that you sort of given me your time. My I recollection is that I was actually doing some work whilst you were doing the sketches and every now and again you would say, look up. Is that and, right? Yeah, and that if actually you, rings a bell. If yeah. you look at the portrait yes. and if you look at this sketch, you will see I have a mild uh, uh, attitude <laughs> of, of irritation. Well, I, I, I think you're right because actually that is also the impression I wanted to give in the painting, that you had somehow uh, glanced at the viewer. So you turned, because you are turning, uh, so that was always meant to be the sense of the painting, to, to, to have a sort of a spontaneous uh, feeling that you've just turned towards the viewer to look at them. Who are you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, intruded on their conversation. It was your idea, I believe, yes, uh, to, to po portray yes. the long since dead uh, first president of the Court of Appeal, yes. uh, Sir Gordon Wallace, yes. and the also ad uh, dead uh, Sir Bernard Sugarman, That's right. uh, both of whom are very great judges, uh, yes. certainly especially Sugarman, yes. and so uh, you portrayed them in the portrait. And their families uh, have since seen the portrait and been very happy about uh, the portrayal of their fathers in it. Well, well th th I think it's a very pa I think it was a powerful idea because the the main the ambition was to represent you in the line of judges wearing the crimson and fur as as of the line from the line in your speech, and it was important I think to show the line being that of presidents of the Supreme Court. I think there was that that lineage was was the one that, that was important to communicate. Being a child of photography, it was an odd idea to me that I was being portrayed with judges with whom I had never sat, who were very much older than I and who were dead. Yes. But uh, the composition evolved and uh, I think on the whole it, it was uh, very creative. And the title, Radical Restraint, uh, I, I, I'd like to know what you think, uh, whether there's more radical or more restraint in the <laughs> portrait. And where did the title come from? Okay, the title was meant to draw attention to some of the themes that I was trying to bring out in the painting. It actually was the creation of my brother, who was a law student at the time. Um, but basically it was meant to describe something about your particular judicial approach, but also to draw attention to some of the themes of the painting. So the, for the word radical, uh, it was meant to draw attention to your uh, progressive judicial approach and in the painting that is represented by the fact that you are the only judge without a wig and that you are gazing I'm not without a wig, I hold the wig, without a wig I on haven't your put head. it on yet. Exactly, and that you're gazing directly at the viewer, so you're addressing the viewer in a way that the other judges aren't. Most of them have their backs to the viewer which might be symbolic of, uh, uh, of uh, basically uh, n not not having the interests of the public at, at heart. That might be a bit of a, a comment, but that might be, uh, it's not directly stated, it might be an insinuation. Well, a different perception of what the law requires. Exactly. A uh, and I, I'm not unhappy with the title myself. No. I think it does show you can uh, be a liberal as a judge, but ultimately you're bound by the law and therefore you're under that restraint. Well, that's so. the restraint, exactly. And the fact that you are represent that, you are still in the line with the other judges, uh, albeit you are a little bit uh, sort of out of step to some extent, um, turn the other way, 
Uh, but you are still in the line, you're still wearing what they're wearing, and so that notion of judicial precedent and, and the importance of adhering to the tradition is, is something I wanted to convey as well in the paper.